Hi, my name is Amelia and today I'm travelling from London to Melbourne and I'm going to take you with me. Australia that I find so fascinating and because it's so far away it's always been such a mystery to me. I want to know what the culture's like, what's the weather like, what's an Australian Christmas like, so I invite you to come with me as I find out. So I'll be starting my journey in Melbourne before flying to Brisbane for a few days and then I'll head down to the Gold Coast before catching a flight to Hamilton Island and then I'll end my trip in Sydney. I find it difficult to comprehend the vastness of Australia. It's a challenge to grasp how a single nation can encompass such diverse terrains, climates and a plethora of wildlife I've never even encountered in person. Equally perplexing is the notion that so much of the land remains uninhabited, particularly when compared to the UK, where we're so densely packed into such a small area. I don't know if anyone else does this, but each time I travel I make it a point to select music in advance, and this way I'll always associate hearing that album with that particular trip. This is one of my favourite albums by George Harrison, and for some reason I feel compelled to take it with me, along with some Rolling Stones. Because of time restraints, I've had to cram a lot into this trip and I had a whole list of places I wanted to go which sadly now I don't have time for. I especially wanted to travel to the Daintree Rainforest. David Attenborough described it as one of the most extraordinary places on earth and I'm sad to miss it. I've never taken a flight this long and I'm not quite sure what to expect. I'll be flying with Emirates. I have an 8 hour flight to Dubai with a 2 hour layover and then it's 13 hours straight to Melbourne. Melbourne, home to over 5.5 million people and voted as Australia's most livable city. I chose to stay at Treasury on Collins and I will always tell you the truth about the hotels I stay in. This one was honestly so good it had everything in it that you could need. For our first day, we checked out Queen Victoria Market. It's a major tourist destination in Melbourne. The market includes locally made art, clothing, plant, books, food, and the traders are all really passionate about what they do. The market is huge and it went on for ages. I don't think I managed to see it all. You can pretty much get anything that you want here. I accidentally touched some kangaroo balls and to be honest, I felt kind of gross for the rest of the day. Melbourne is known for having some great street art. Hosea Lane is Melbourne's most celebrated laneway. There's lots of colorful graffiti and urban art and it draws in a lot of tourists. I saw so many people having their photos taken in front of the walls, probably for their Instagram. I've heard that the street art regularly changes and that no two visits to this lane are the same. So finally out today, um, Melbourne though is absolutely fantastic. It does remind me a lot of the UK. So when I got off the plane, I almost was a bit like what? Because I felt like I'd just been travelling 24 hours to basically land back in the UK. It's really funny, the weather is so nice. Um, and I'm so happy to be here. Another place I visited was the Acme Museum, which is free to enter. It's the Museum of Screen Culture and the aim is to navigate through film, TV, art and video games. It's not bad for a free museum and it's something good to do on a rainy day in Melbourne. After the museum I had my very first Betty's Burger which is an Australian fast food diner. It was so good I definitely recommend trying it and I ended up becoming obsessed. The National Gallery of Melbourne houses a great variety of modern and classic artwork. It's a really nice open space. 
There wasn't anything about the museum that I think will blow you away, especially if you've been to other art galleries, but it's still a nice collection to have in Melbourne, and if you're looking to see some art, then it's the best place to go. I think Melbourne is such a lovely city, and the fact that it has a tram system makes it feel somewhat European to me. It's so trendy and it just has really nice relaxed vibes. The Yarra River runs through Melbourne and I think this adds to the city's charm. I can kind of understand why people would want to move out here. I mean, getting to sit next to the river on a summer's day is just such an attractive prospect. We got lucky with the weather and went to visit the Royal Botanic Gardens. Even the walk there was lovely. Everyone we passed just seemed so happy. If you choose to walk there, then you'll also pass the Shrine of Remembrance. This is a war memorial, and it was built to honour the men and women of Victoria who served in World War I. The Botanic Gardens are free to enter. As you arrive, there is a small gift shop and there are also some toilets. The gardens were much bigger than I initially thought. It was a little busy and someone was even getting married there as we were walking through. Melbourne had a really strange familiar feeling and it kind of reminds me of what England is like on a summer's day. Look at how tall this tree is. So I just got some gelato and I got proper gelato and you can tell it's proper gelato because the place that we went to it doesn't have the mounds of gelato outside the window it's got them in the kind of steel um, kind of vats so you can't actually see what it is um, and this is mint ice cream and it's not green and that's how you also know it's good gelato. I can't pronounce it but we ended up eating at this restaurant in the Greek Quarter because everyone told us it was amazing and look at the queue outside the front door. However, I have to say it was, it was just average. We're off to Puffinbilly Railway today. It's about an hour and 20 minutes outside of the city of Melbourne. So we'll take a look and see what that's like. I've also been burnt. The UV index here is seriously, seriously high, so make sure you have some good sun cream. It takes just over one hour to get from Flinders Street Station to Belgrave Station. Also, I can't believe how cheap the transport is here in Melbourne. Just some advice, so we've arrived about an hour before we were supposed to set off because that's what they tell you to do. I wouldn't actually recommend you come an hour before because you're just basically left waiting around um, and there's nowhere to even sit, so just come about half an hour before if you can. When I first heard about Puff and Billy, it seemed like such a cute thing to do, and I was a little worried that we would be the only adults there, but when we turned up there were actually very few children, it was mostly just adult tourists. Billy is located in the heart of the Dandenong Ranges. It's a steam train and the best thing about it is that you can dangle your legs over the edge as the train runs. Puffin Billy is also run by volunteers and you can tell that all the staff there really care. Just a tip when you get on the train, sit on the right hand side when you're going towards Lakeside because you'll see a hell of a lot more than if you sit on the left hand side because the right hand side will kind of show you the drop into the rainforest and everything. Once you arrive at Lakeside, you have to wait two hours before you can get your train back to Belgrove. I think, I don't think you can actually pick an earlier train, I think you get a set two hours here, which is okay, but um, there's, a, there's a few things to do. You can grab some food or you can walk down to the river and rent some boats. Ideally, I would have preferred just to have picked like 
the time of train I'd, I'd, I'd want back, but um, it's not too bad. I guess they need to keep you here so you can spend your money. Sadly, the weather didn't quite hold out. I think Puff and Billy is a great thing to do if you have kids, and I think it would just make a good family day out. Today is a very rainy day in Melbourne, and I have a really bad sore throat. So we decided just to have a bit of a chill day, and we're going to Melbourne Museum. The Melbourne Museum is a natural and cultural history museum. I'll be honest and say I only really came for the dinosaur walk. I do love a good dinosaur. And when I found out that they had the skeletons of 17 prehistoric animals and one of the most complete Triceratops fossils ever found, I was pretty excited. Since I was in Melbourne and I had some time to kill, I thought I would go check out Loon just because I'd heard everyone talking about it on TikTok. So I'm currently in the queue for Loon to try their croissants because apparently they are amazing and quite expensive as well so I'm going to get one and see what it tastes like. The queue moves quite fast, I was only in it for probably 5 minutes. The croissant also cost around 7 Australian dollars which is quite a lot for a single croissant. Hey, moment of truth. It's okay. I'm not sure it's worth the amount. Yeah, I'm really not sure it's worth the amount, but it's okay. Let's try the other one. Okay, I don't know what I don't know what this one's called. This one is a lot better. This one's really good. I rate this one. Cost it not so much. I had a really good time in Melbourne. I was only there for two or three days, and I would have liked to have gotten out of the city and explored more, but I feel like I did a lot with the time that I had. I especially wanted to go to Phillip Island to see the penguins and I also wanted to see the 12 apostles, but hopefully I'll get to do that one day. Next I'll be flying to Brisbane, so stay tuned if you want to see what I get up to. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, please subscribe.